Something is not quite right with this circuit board, but can you see what exactly? And how about now? Yep, this part right here is hotter than it should be, and we found it out thanks to this thermal camera. This is the Thermal Master P3. It was sent to me to test and review, so I've been playing with it for the past two weeks. I'm happy to say that it's really good, especially when compared to my old thermal camera. And the manual focus adjustment makes it ideal for troubleshooting electronics. If you are new to thermal cameras, here is what makes them useful. Unlike normal cameras, they can see infrared light. This allows them to detect and measure differences in temperature, which are visualized in software by having different colors applied to colder and warmer areas. It's kind of like having predator vision, and you can even save photos and videos to share with clients and colleagues. Thermal cameras have a number of practical applications. They can be used for inspecting walls for moisture and plumbing installations for leaks. They are also great for fixing electronics and inspecting machines for hotspots. You can even cheat at hide and seek at night. The reason why you probably don't have one in your toolbox is that thermal cameras are very expensive. Or at least they used to be. In recent years we've seen much more affordable models enter the market. The Thermal Master P3 in particular costs only around $300, which is a bargain considering what it can do. It is designed to work with a smartphone or a laptop, so it plugs directly into a phone and works together with an app to take photos and videos. In the box you'll find an extension cable, which you can use with a phone or a laptop. You also get this lightning adapter, which you'll need for older iPhones. It is great that they were able to make one camera model work with iPhones, Android phones and laptops. In contrast, my older thermal camera is not compatible with iPhone. What I wish they could copy is this adjustable connector. On the Thermal Master P3 it is fixed in place and made extra long to compensate for whatever protective case you may have on your phone. However, I think it sticks out a bit too much, which probably makes it easier to break. So be careful, whenever you're not using the camera, it is best to keep it safe in this protective case. Another thing I want to mention, the Thermal Master P3 does not have a battery. It draws power from whatever device it is connected to. I'm saying this because some FLIR models do have internal non-removable batteries, which can be very annoying. With these, the phone cannot power the camera directly, so you have to recharge it separately. Then the battery dies in less than an hour and the whole camera becomes unusable. So I very much prefer this approach. Even though the Thermal Master will drain some of your phone's battery, its power consumption is very low. Now let's talk image quality. I cooked chicken with rice the other night and here's what the oven looked like through the thermal camera. You can clearly see the electrical heaters, including the bottom ones which are not exposed and I will surely need gloves to open that pot. I also looked at the circuit breaker panel. I think it's easy to figure out which one is for the oven. Hot chocolate looks like molten lava and it is oddly satisfying to watch as it flows and cools down. If I point the camera at the wall, I can see a cold water pipe underneath. And here, this square spot must be a cable distribution box. But the Thermal Master P3 truly shines when you get closer. It has adjustable focus, which allows you to take thermal images from a very short distance, of around 1 or 2 centimeters. You can literally see individual traces and surface mount components on circuit boards. It makes finding short circuits and failed parts much easier. My old camera cannot do that. I mean, it still provides a somewhat usable thermal image, but the heat map is not as clear and I've always had issues with alignment. This is a FLIR 1, which uses both a thermal sensor and a visible light camera, from which it takes some information to render the edges of objects. But the actual heat map lacks detail at such close distances. Speaking of detail, the Thermal Master software has a feature called X3, which is supposed to improve detail and sharpness. But honestly, I don't see much of a difference, and sometimes it creates these strange glitches. I usually kept it turned off. You may have noticed that the resolution of these images is relatively low, and indeed the sensor inside the P3 is just 256 by 192 pixels, 
so it's impossible to capture the fine details we are used to seeing from regular cameras. However, for thermal cameras this is normal. Here is a high-end model that costs $10,000, but it has a resolution of just 640 by 480 which is just 0.3 megapixels. I cannot say exactly why, but from what I understand, it's a limitation of the way these thermal sensors work. But again, the adjustable focus on the Thermal Master P3 greatly compensates for the low resolution. I can just take images from extremely close if I want more detail. By the way, the camera app also captures sound through the microphone of your phone, and this is what it sounds like. However, it picks up this clicking sound from when the camera calibrates itself, which can be annoying. To use the Thermal Master P3, you need to download a special camera app to your device. I have an Android phone, but an iPhone version is also available. There is a version for Windows as well, but there is no Mac software at this time. After you plug the camera into the USB port, it takes a few seconds before it is recognized and ready to use. This is pretty fast actually. My FLIR camera takes much longer to start up. And now you use the Thermal Camera app to take photos and videos. All the files are saved to your phone, so they are immediately available for sharing. The application offers several color palettes for visualizing temperature difference. For example, this is the classic iron scheme which has great contrast, but this green color setting is a lot easier on the eyes. By default, the camera displays the temperatures at the hottest and the coldest points in the frame, as well as in the middle. However, you can also set it to display measurements only within a certain area, marked with one or several rectangles or circles. You can also just turn all measurements off and have just a plain, clean thermal image, in case that suits the situation best. Overall, the Android app works ok in my experience. I've only come across several bugs which are not critical. Like if you turn off all temperature readings without tapping the delete button, the last measurements will still show up in the image. Also, the app does not take into account the orientation of the phone, so all my landscape videos are saved sideways. And it is a bad design choice that the temperature readings are displayed in red when hotspots are also visualized in red. The digits can be very difficult to read. But I believe all these issues can be fixed in an update. Let's hope they get taken care of. As for the Windows application, it works, even though it feels somewhat incomplete. I can still take photos and videos just fine, but the interface can be confusing with some of the menus and labels. In conclusion, the Thermal Master P3 is going to be my main thermal camera from now on. For an affordable USB thermal camera, it works really well and takes good photos and videos, while the manual focus adjustment is a game changer if you work with electronics. And even though I came across several glitches here and there, I hope they will get fixed with a software update. This is the kind of tool you don't realize you need until you try it, and it is great to have such capable instruments at prices accessible to hobbyists and enthusiasts. If you want one, I'll have a link in the description. Subscribe to my channel for more electronics videos and I will see you next time.